Welcome, everybody. This is the Day Trader Genius Stock Options Daily Review for November 26, 2018. Our goal is to show you that there were multiple opportunities to make, I like to say, 10% in 10 minutes. It could be 10% in three minutes, or it could be 30% in uh, 20 minutes. But there are multiple opportunities for you to make money trading stock options that are low risk. It's kind of like the low frame low hanging fruit and they're there pretty much every day and that's our main goal and we have with us i'm scott Patton, your co-host and we have with us again coach rob he's going to take us through some some uh some trades that happened on the 26th of november and we may delve into a little bit about how the software works as well so welcome to the show coach rob thank you scott good to see you so it's the 26th. Everybody's had their turkey. Um, nothing happened today, right? <laughs> well, yeah, people might have had the itis, right? Uh, still have the tryptophan in their systems. The, the market wasn't great today. This is the basket. We've, we've fast forwarded all the way to the end of the day. The basket is just that cream of the crop for options. So you bundle them together and you put them into a basket, <clears throat> as it were. And you see what most of the options were doing throughout the day. On this day, we had a lot of very low volume, but from the opening price, the collective opening price of all these options, it stayed up for the most part of the day. So I call it a green day, more cyclical than anything. You have your ups and downs and ups and downs. Uh, but even on a cyclical day, there's the opportunity to make profits. And uh, as, as your catchphrase says, 10% in 10 minutes is possible on, on each and every day. It would have to be really dead to have nothing uh so uh, let's <laughs> i just want to interrupt you for just a second yeah. that does not mean that you turn on your computer and turn on the program and 10 minutes later you make 10 percent. what it means is is that you're aware of the market you're aware of the situation and what it's going with it's it's red it's green but it's going up going down and where opportunities may or may occur because that's another thing we know that there are certain times when there's more opportunity than others and then you're playing the we call it, I'll call it playing the game, like whether it's baseball or football or whatever, like you're in the game, you're there, you're paying attention, you're alert, you're doing what you need to do to be successful. And then you find the opportunity. And from the time you find the opportunity and actually execute to the time you finish, oftentimes that's, that's around 10 minutes. So we like to talk about 10% to 10 minutes, please, please don't go up to Coach Rob and say, Coach Rob, I was four hours making my 10% because I started, you know, I turned it on and then it was four hours later when I found my opportunity and 10, 10 minutes later when I got it. No, it's not about, you know, just turning it on and there it is in the, in the first 10 minutes that you see it. But mm -hmm. when you look at your trades and you've looked at the trades that we're showing you, you'll notice something, which is they are not long. Yeah, generally not. <clears throat> and really, you want to keep it that way so that you're not in in multiple trends, right? So we talked about these cycles. This is the SPY, one of the most powerful indexes. It's S and P 500 for for the layman. You don't want to you you want to catch a trend. You don't want to have to wait out seeing your your profits increase and then having a drawback and you wait through all this flutter and then you have to wait till the end of the day just just to get your profits back. I mean, it's high risk and it is, it is not fun living, right? Part of the reason we're doing this is to enhance our lifestyles and, and have really short work days. That's not fun. That's stressful. And uh, it's just not worth, no, juice isn't worth the squeeze, as they say. Right. Uh, yeah. So there, the opportunities are there, even on some, some nastier kind of murky days. And the first one I wanted to get into was... And this is the end of the day, five minute candles. So let's go back to about that 10 o'clock hour. And I want to look at Netflix. And as you saw in the basket, it was an up and down day. So we're going to have some puts, some calls. And Netflix was, was a nice one. It had a uh, pretty strong green move. As you can see, these are five minute candles. And when we're in the early part of the day, we want to have a smaller time scale so we can catch these trends a little bit better. So now that I put it on one minute, Scott, it's it's pretty obvious what's going on here. And we've talked about this in the past as the risk zone. So once it breaks out of this orange tinted area, 
that's when you have a decreased amount of risk and you can kind of trust these trends a little bit more. But we've also talked a lot about resistance lines. So once a symbol like Netflix uh, ticker breaks through one of these resistance lines with some volume, you could probably, you, I mean, you can't bank on it, but your strategy sh can be built around those strong moves that result. Uh, in this case, Netflix had that really strong move up, and lo and behold, it went all the way to the next resistance line, which is which is part of my strategy. I look I look for the room to run in between those resistance lines, especially when it's supported by the market, right? Which it was at this at this time at a nice green market and those those volume spikes. So if you get back to it right here, we've also got the opening price lurking in that area. So essentially the way you can break it down and the way I coach my students is give Netflix a little bit of a personality, right? Personify it a little bit. Make Netflix prove to you that it's got the juice to break through the risk zone, prove yourself out of the risk zone, prove that it can break that opening price, which is you know where that day started, and prove that it can break that resistance line. So here, I'm not convinced. Move forward one minute. Yep, I'm convinced. And it's got that room, that profit potential, which is that room to run before the next resistance line. So let's get in here and see what happens. And I'll bring up my options buying window. We'll just move forward one minute at a time. We'll watch it take shape. It's got all the indicators that we really like. So four minutes, higher highs, lower. And you can see with that wick, right? The wick is the range that that candle moved during that minute. And this is kind of the open and close. So you can see it had a big range. So with that volume, it's pushing. You got a lot of buyers out there. You got a lot of sellers, a little bit of disagreement. But you do have that room to run. And it's, it's continuing to charge up one minute at a time. And there, right there, we've got the 10 o'clock hour, right? So time windows are a, a big deal uh, when it comes to trends in the market. And we hit that resistance line. We touched that that guy right there. This is this is obvious exit for me and some of the main exit strategy points that I will teach my students. So let's get out there, exit that call position, see how that ended up. So in the span of five minutes, we made 12.6%. Nice. Not too shabby. And if you would like, I can just roll right into the to the next trade. Yeah, let's take a look and see if there's another trade here that we can. Sure. And uh, this was, again, we, we looked at the basket, right? It had that cyclical motion. So if I fast forward about a half an hour, we had a move with Tesla that was pretty nice. And you can see that right there. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna advance it to five minute candles. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do three, three minute candles for this one. Yeah, let's do that. This, you know, you change your for for the uninitiated out there with our program and with most candle based charts, you change the time scale so that it's perceptible to you. So you can see these trends coming. If you get to the end of the day and you know, on one minute candles, it's it's really not helpful. It's just a jumble of information. And if you start the day on five or 10 minute candles, that's, you're not getting the, the level of detail you need. So always be changing that. I guess that's my tip of the day. Uh, do your time scales well and pay attention to those time windows. A lot of those turnarounds will happen at the one hour or 30 minute or even 15 minute marks. So pay attention to the time. In this case, Tesla had a really nice charge up. And then we talked about those resistance lines, Scott hit that RA, it broke from risk zone, pivot and risk zone, had a nice green move, and then it just hit that resistance line. And how many That's times have we seen this before? Yeah. It just stagnated, right? Like it lost steam, right? So we talked about personifying uh, Netflix before. Well, think about Tesla in, in, a, in a personified way. Had a nice sprint, and then it just kind of ran out of gas. Now it's got to catch its breath. So that's what it's doing from eh, 10, 10, 10 to 10, 20. Uh, that's, that's essentially what it's doing. And then we had some volume buyers come in. 
And that's what really spurred it past that resistance line and uh, give it the, the breath it needed to charge up again. So let's get back into it. We'll go all the way back. Let's see, where are we at now? At 10.25, okay. So here we go. It's, this is a rogue, right? So Tesla is, we, I told you about personifying the stock. Sometimes they have personalities too. Tesla is a wild one. It'll have strong moves and it'll have sometimes nothing to do with the market. And so right now the market looks like it's trending red and down, but we're looking at this for going up with the call. Yeah, all the all the power in the market is is red, but I'm just gonna bring over the, the list real quick so you can see there's not really much going on. The market is kind of undecided. Bring over the, just this the power genius real quick. That's at minus five, it's essentially you know, nil. So this is what we categorize as a rogue stock. It, it's against the power of the market. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot to do with the list. Um, you know, the list isn't giving you a strong indication either way, but, but that, that ticker doesn't mean, it doesn't mean because the market is weird that the ticker can't have a strong move. So right. even during these times you're scanning and you're watching for breakouts like this. And uh, so this is, this is where I would have, said, hey, yeah, Tesla proved to me that it's breaking above that resistance line. So I'd like to get in here and see what happens. So we'll buy a call in this case. And yeah, it's, it's a little bit of flutter where we've lost a percentage and now we're, we're breaking even. So let's see what happens. We're starting to pick up some volume. If you see these pink histograms in the bottom, that's volume of of buyers in this case mostly and they're they're pushing the momentum volume creates stronger trends we look for that and right here we're starting to get some more higher highs and it's charging upward the market hasn't really changed much it's still at that you know red 50 red 30 kind of scale but we just hit um nine percent in three minutes and there's really no end in sight for Tesla. You still got the volume coming up. I, I think I would take it another minute until that 1030 turnaround. Um, and then, then I'd be out. We talked about time scales a lot. Eh, and so you're at 6%. But if you didn't see anything in your way, she's going to keep going and you can hit 12%. Again, we talked about it in the past, Scott. These blue guys are my filters. Those are alerts to tell me something powerful is happening with that stock. So there's something behind it. I've got my volume support. I've got my higher highs. So I'll just I'll hold. Now this previous high line, this green guy, that can be a powerful one. So right here is about where I I would get out because I see that coming. Yeah. Uh, volume's good. I don't want it to spike volume, which generally indicates the sellers are going to take over and it's going to um, go back to a red trend. So I'd be out right here and I'd take that profit and I'd run. And your favorite thing is, Hey, where's it, what's going to happen when it hits that uh, <laughs> previous high? That's right. Well, there you go. So, oh yeah. And now we got, we got the previous high. We got a double Y point and it's she's learning. Oh, she did. She broke it. Yeah, and then is she gonna keep going or is she gonna come down? Man, it's gonna hit that next resistance line and I guess go sideways. Well, see the thing we were talking about before, you don't wanna be holding for two hours to make your 10%. <clears throat> That's right, and also this is very stressful because right. you know that it's hit, the, it's hit that high. Uh, it's quite possible, more more likely it's going to go down. You know that the market is, you know, neutral, well, neutral right now, but has been kind of negative. So do uh, you want that stress for a couple more percentage points? No. You know, you, there's some pretty clear indicators. And this is all about get in, get out, get in, get out. This isn't about uh, swallowing the lake. This is about taking a cup out of the lake. Yeah, and it's about catching those those trends that are 
the shortest duration, less least stress, and lowest risk. Uh, when you start having these red candles, and when we're looking at the green move, if you have red candles starting to sprinkle themselves in, those are oof, those are really really stressful moments, and they're also uh, risky moments. So yeah. yeah, another way to think of it, and I like how you say this, Coach Rob, is the fact that there's someone. Uh, well, there's there's someone on the other side, but what happens is there's another person and he's thinking, well, this is high enough. I'm going to take my profit. And so he sells. And so when there becomes more and more and more and more of those people, yeah. then it's going to be harder and harder and harder for the price to go up because all of a sudden you've gone from bullish to bearish. And we don't, sometimes don't think about that. It's like people have goals. It's like, okay, I made my 12%. I made my 10%. I made my 2% or whatever it is. I'm out. And then you've got computerized trading, and everything else, which these computers jump in and say, there's no right. thinking at all. If you hit this, you sell. You hit this, you buy. And that's what they do all day long. And so, yep. uh, you know, you if once you start realizing that, it's kind of like, let's go. It's not, it's not like a horse race where you're cheering on your horse. It's how long before the crowd turns on the stock or or supports the stock depending on which way you put it right mm -hmm. it's like yeah go higher go higher we're all pushing it up and then it's like oh, i've made enough i'm gonna drop out yeah and just just like any novice trader uh well a lot of a lot of the advanced traders on the other side of the the screen we say sometimes they're fueled by emotions as well so fear or greed so when they see a red candle that instills fear in them and a lot of times they'll precipitously drop the price by just sell, 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 or through their their computer programs, you know, high frequency traders, which can execute these transactions a lot quicker than your so you than your finger can. So you want to get out before the trend ends. You want to be an early exiter, not hanging around through this flutter and, and holding on to hope. So let's take a review of the day. Uh, for sure, and we had, we had one more. We had a third oh, one. If you want to get into that, sure. Uh, oh, sorry, I, I miscounted. No, it's all it's all good. These were two pretty good calls, and just real briefly, uh, we saw the basket at the very beginning, and it was a kind of a cyclical day. So I'll show you that on the same day, you can make profit on a call and a put, and it's about the same time frame. To jump briefly over to Apple, which was having a strong red move, and if you're looking for it, Scott, you can. You can see that right there. We've talked about the risk zone and the power behind uh, waiting until or the patience it takes to wait until it's outside that risk zone. Because these look like nice trends too, but eh, it's just too too high risk. So let's look at this red trend. We already had signal on, and I'm just gonna let's go back to the moment, the the moment of truth when you're breaking out and see what was happening. The market was 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 fairly red and Apple is, is following the, the market or the basket and it was starting to charge down. Now this was the area where it was the previous range, right? So earlier in the day, we had had two red cycles uh, just, you know, on a few minute time span and they all bounced off this kind of area about this Y point, this Y point, the bottom of the risk zone, essentially. And once Apple shows me, with this big old candle here with some volume that it's willing to break out of those floors, as we'll put, call them like ceilings and floors, and outside the risk zone with volume, signal, K-band, J-stop, uh, and trend line, I'm, I'm ready to get in. So let's just quickly take a look at it, see what Apple will do. And we already kind of previewed it right there, uh, but, we're making a couple percentage and nice candles are coming up. Now my filters are coming on. That's what that little blue M is. And we're pushing that previous low. So sometimes you get wacky behavior on those highs and lows. And this 5% and just flirting with the, the previous low. And, you know, essentially what, what pushes this past that previous low is that volume. These nice fat candles. And these pink histograms mean you have good volume in that moment. So that's why I wasn't so scared about a 20-day break below. Um, it it, it kind of 
resonates with you. But these these volume spikes are turnarounds uh, a lot of times. So if it's higher, big, big, big time volume spike, it might be time to get out. So I think we're good there with our 12%. And uh, let's just see what happens as it, yeah. yeah you called it. No, and then, you know, we talked about it a minute ago. I don't want to hold on through that. I yeah. just want to take take my profits. Those, and, those green candles are really stressful. Yeah, and it, it you know, okay, so it broke down further. Big whoop. Yeah, and it wasn't worth the that would Maybe that would be another time to get in. It might be, yeah. Broke that, the, the previous range and, and cascaded down. Yeah, possibly you could get, you know, 5 10% in there. Yeah, you don't, you don't have to get in and stay in. You can get in, get out. And if you want to get in again, get in again. But we prefer to have one trade a day, make your 10 or 12% and then enjoy your life. Yeah, and this, you know, just to bring it back to the beginning, Scott, we, we looked at the basket at the beginning. It was kind of a nasty day, low volume, but between puts and calls in the options world, you can you can make a really good percentage if you're looking for the right trades. Right. So November 26th, Netflix, 12.6% in five minutes. Tesla, 15.9% in eight minutes. Apple. 11.9% in nine minutes. So pretty good trades. Every day, they're almost every day, won't say a 100% of every day. Uh, there are trades that we think you could make uh, using the software, using the training that Coach Rob brings you that would bring you these types of returns. So any last words, Coach Rob, before we sign off for today? Just on the days following holidays, can be kind of sparse like this, right? Everybody's still got a belly full of turkey. So just trade with caution when there's been a big landmark uh, event like that. Those those can move markets too. Those, there's human factors involved. Great. Great. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.